had a friend get in touch with me. Hey, you still doing drawing? You want to come work on the new Alien movie? And so, again, I'm in Southern California. So I knew some people that were in the industry. And I got a job at a special effects studio there in L.A. to the bridge right here on Business Bridge Media, the place where the excellent people of Northwest Arkansas come to hear about the excellent businesses of Northwest Arkansas and all of the goings on of nonprofits and just individuals that are helping make things a little better for other individuals. Guys, I have a great guest on tap for today. I'm going to introduce you to him in just a few minutes, but first I want to tell you about all the great things going on over at Sunrise Studios. Carrie Hodges and her team over on Sunrise Studios, I believe that's on Sunset Avenue, right next door in that Harp Shopping Center. Harps is facing Sunset, and just right around on the other side of the building there is Carrie's Sunrise Studios. She's got everything you need for your coffee cups, your souvenirs, your, your sweatshirts, your team jerseys, all that good stuff. Carrie makes me work shirts and coffee cups and, and, and cool things that we like to give some of our guests sometimes whenever we have them, and uh, it, it's just a great business to know and to trust. Carrie and her husband have been in business for a while. It's family owned and operated. And Carrie, you've never met anyone who cares more about the design for for your particular uh, souvenir or shirt or something else. Listen, what I love about Carrie is just this. She understands the pain points of a small business. What I mean by that is she charges no minimums or enforces no minimums. So like literally, I have a two-person team here at the bridge. I can order two shirts, and she's going to make those two shirts without charging me an extra fee because I only bought two shirts. And so what I love about Sunrise Studios is that Carrie's passion for life extends into her passion for her business, and she's going to treat you right. That Sunrise Studios over on Sunset Avenue, if you can think it, They can ink it, and so put them to the test today. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out and listening to me talk about Carrie and all of the magic over at Sunrise Studios. We have some other sponsors that want to be heard from here on the bridge, so we'll be back right after a word from our sponsors. Are you confused trying to find affordable health insurance? Don't go at it alone. Blair Beatty understands the options and is an expert at finding coverage that fits your needs and budget. Blair will simplify it for you so you get the care you deserve without overpaying. Call Blair at Optimum Health today. We are back here on the bridge, and I'm looking forward to introducing my new friend to you because I think he's got a story that we're all going to find kind of interesting. Uh, It's David Henze with Henze Art Studio. Welcome, David. How are you today? Doing fine. Good, man. How was the ride into the podcast this morning? Well, all the way from Gravit, uh, it only took about... 40 or so minutes, not too bad. That's a long way to come. So thanks so much for coming all the way to downtown Fayetteville. I love this place, but when you're coming from Gravit, it can be a long drive, right? And so thanks so much for doing that. Um, David, you've got a cool journey that you've been on from, uh, uh, what, uh, art enthusiast to public school teacher and now art studio owner. Can't wait to hear about it. Tell us about Henzi Art Studio. Well, all right. Uh, actually, in a few weeks, it's going to be our fifth year anniversary wow. there in Gravit. Uh, we moved to Northwest Arkansas about uh, six years ago before we opened up the studio. Uh, six years in total. Mm-hmm. And before that, I was in Hong Kong for about 17 years as the art teacher. Okay. So I graduated with a degree in art with an edu- uh, education uh, concentration mm-hmm. uh, back in 2002 and moved straight to Hong Kong uh, to be an art slash English teacher because I was a native English 
speaker. Okay. Was it the was it the position that took you to Hong Kong, or was it something else? It was the person sitting next to me over here, my oh, wife. the one yeah. that doesn't want to be on the camera. The one that's not on the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the secret little arm that yeah. pops in and, and yeah. hits She'll you. She'll be poking me in there. There it yeah, is. See, I wasn't yeah. lying. So, okay. Well, good deal. So you followed love to Hong Kong. Correct. I only had to go to Harrison, so good job, yeah. man. <laughs> it was only about 7,000 miles from yeah. L.A., so hey, not too bad. Love knows no boundaries, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, fantastic, man. Tell us about what you did in Hong Kong. Well, I moved there to be the well to to be with my then girlfriend to, mm-hmm. to date her. But I moved with a degree to be an art teacher. Uh, but to get the job, it, it was easier for me to be an international English speaker teacher. So I I taught English and did some art. Uh, so at the <laughs> beginning, I was in the preschools doing m- mostly uh, phonics and English. Uh, with a little bit of an art lesson involved. Uh, after a couple years, I moved up and started doing elementary art in a more of a international school setting, not so much a public school setting. Mm-hmm. And then after some years of that, moving up to doing junior high art, and then later moving up to doing high school art. So I did more specialized art and design and photography and page layout and um, high school art stuff. Okay. Wow, good yeah. stuff, man. So, uh, was teaching always the dream? No, when I was <laughs> when I was in junior high, elementary school, I was always drawing in school. I was the student who, during tests, would turn the t- turn the paper over and just draw pictures. Yeah, and so I was that student where the teacher would have to tell me to finish the test before I could do the drawing. Gotcha. And I always always wanted to do superheroes, comic books, animation. Uh, during high school, I uh, was developing comic books, superheroes. And after graduating high school, I was putting in my portfolio. I lived in Southern California and LA, you know, kind of yeah. the area where Love a lot of there. Disney animation is done out there. Mm-hmm. And so I had a, a interview with a comic book studio back then and, uh, sent my portfolios into Disney and a couple other animes, uh, animation studios. But, I went to school to do my degree in um, graphic design. Mm. That was my first choice. Uh, well, after not getting the job in animation or comic book uh, illustration. And so I went to school to get my graphic design degree. About a year and a half later after that, uh, I just dropped out and said, I don't think I need a degree to be doing arts and uh, design. And so I started my own little business doing design, t-shirt design, mural paintings in high schools like that. And then not long after that, had a friend get in touch with me. He's, hey, you still doing drawing? You want to come work on the new Alien movie? And so, again, I'm in wow. Southern California, so yeah. I knew some people that were in the industry, and I got a job at a special effects studio there in L.A. Uh, working on the fourth Alien movie, Wow, Alien Resurrection. Uh was there for a while, and they had another movie that they were going to work on, an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called I Am Legend. Yeah. Except it was going to, they turned it into a Will Smith I movie. I started to say, yeah. wait a minute, Arnold they, Schwarzenegger they, wasn't in that. He was tied to do it before he decided to become a governor. What an interesting difference that would have made in that film. And so our studio was helping to work on the designs of the physical makeup while that didn't get made. Will Smith came back later to do the film. And they decided not to do the physical makeup, so they used another uh, company to do the more special okay. effects, um, computer, yeah. digital effects. Wow. Well, that's so cool, man. So, yeah, I was there doing the special effects, thinking that I would start working on doing special effects um, illustration design work. Uh, but that was kind of in a time in my life where the the studio, they didn't get that job. And so in that line of work when there's not a movie to be made they tell you well we'll call you when there's a movie to be made Mm. it's like well what do i do now Mm -hmm. so i was kind of without of a job and thinking not too far ahead i said i I don't want to be in a in a place where i am not sure i have a job so uh at that time i was also breaking up with the girlfriend i had and uh uh, things at my church uh friends weren't speaking to me like i thought Friends should be speaking to you mm-hmm. when you're at church. And so it's kind of three things, losing my job, losing a girlfriend, and friends at church. So like, what am I going to do with my life? And so I decided just to go back to school. Uh, my parents are teachers. My aunts and uncles are teachers. My parents' parents, all my grandparents are all teachers. So I'm coming from a, a family of teachers. And I thought, well, 
if anything, teaching's a stable job. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go back to be, to get my degree to be a teacher, an uh, art teacher. Mm. Wow. Well, I'm curious. Uh, so then you you do the teaching thing. Um, how talk to about the talk to us about the transition between teaching in the classroom and making the jump to open your own art studio. So when we decided to move to Arkansas, my parents uh, bought a place and built a home in Bella Vista, Arkansas. So we moved in with them while we got our feet on the ground and took a couple different interviews at different schools in Northwest Arkansas. And uh, mostly I didn't have a teaching certificate for Missouri, the one place I was looking for mm-hmm. across, across the state line. And uh, while in Hong Kong, I was also doing little arts and craft kits where I went to like a, a craft fair market in Hong Kong mm-hmm. and you know, sat with a little table and sold my arts and crafts. And when moving into Bella Vista, they back then they had the Bella Vista Arts and Crafts Festival, but since COVID, they've shut that down and they're mm. kind of restarting things. Uh, but with the Arts and Crafts Festival, I said, well, I don't have a teaching job yet. I'll just take all my Arts and Crafts stuff, go to the fair, see what I can make. And just in like two days, made really good money wow. from these Arts and Crafts. And so that's where I just thought, well, maybe I need to take a break on teaching right now and I'm just going to work on my Arts and Crafts. Uh, so I'm working in my parents' house in kind of like the basement. I, I have a family of four kids, so it's six kids my moving goodness. into Grandpa and Grandma's house. Wow. So a small little place, and I'm trying to do arts and crafts business in the bottom floor, working off the kitchen table, putting arts and craft kits together. And I just was telling my wife that I, I, want, a, I want a place. I need a studio space. And so just looking around. Our kids were in the Gravit schools, and so just driving into Gravit from Bella Vista, um, drop them off at school, mm-hmm. looking for a coffee shop, found a little coffee shop there in Gravit, Grumpy's uh, Coffee, and driving past there, going through Main Street. They had just redone Main Street uh, some years, a couple of years. I'm not sure exactly how uh, far before we moved there, but... Main Street just looks like a beautiful little town. Mm. Drove through there and all these little shops that are either closed or um, looking for rent. I thought, well, maybe I'll just try rent one of these spots. Thinking that I need a studio space. Mm -hmm. And then also thinking, well, I got to pay for rent. I can't just do my arts and crafts stuff. Uh, We were uh, getting into all the different arts and craft fairs around Northwest Arkansas, uh, even further out. But I thought to try and supplement some uh, income, I would do classes. So I'm an art teacher, taught art for 16 plus years. Uh, So we opened up the doors in 2019 of May. And, uh, you know, we put out a very big schedule of classes, daily Monday to Friday classes. And I think we had like Three people yeah. sign up, you know. If you build it, they will come. Right. Not always, right? Yeah. So, At least not I mean, immediately. It took some time. And uh, I know for my wife, it was um, more or less pulling hair for a while, just waiting for people to sign up. Mm-hmm. And so it, I, I, it, for both of us, it was, okay, how long is this going to take to get people? And it's also gravid. It's a smaller a town than what we're used to. And so uh, it did take some time, but we've been there for five years, and we've really plugged in with the homeschool uh, communities in mm-hmm. Northwest Arkansas. And uh, I do we do a lot of arts and craft classes now at the studio, but I also go out to some uh, homeschool um, academy um, gatherings and do art classes and art and crafts things for different. Uh, homeschool wow groups wow well guys we've got an interesting guest today for sure we're gonna go ahead and take our another break here at the bridge we'll be right back with all you bridge followers with more of our great story pathfinder incorporated enriches lives in northwest arkansas our nonprofit provides community-based support for the intellectually and developmentally disabled including adult day treatment residential care waivers, and therapy. Call Kristen at 479-254-6717 or visit us at 2616 South Walton Boulevard in Bentonville. We are back 
here at the bridge. Listen, if you haven't already, go ahead and pound that subscribe button, share this episode, like this episode, introduce the bridge to all of your friends. We're growing this station one subscriber at a time. And so it very much matters that you press that subscribe button, that you're liking episodes and telling everybody around Northwest Arkansas just what a great podcast this is for the listeners of Northwest Arkansas. Here today with my guest, David Henze from Henze's Art Studio. He's been a fascinating individual telling us all about his journey. Um, But now, David, I'd love for you, man, just tell us more about Henze's Art Studio. Okay, well... um at the studio, we do a lot of uh, classes for homeschool kids during the day. We uh, are also doing a lot of adult classes. I do go out to the senior art center. I do a group of um, a senior, well, o- older uh, people, not just the children. Uh, my wife, however, uh, she is getting into doing the teaching as well. When we started, uh, we still had a son at home, so she did a lot of uh, staying at home with, with the kids. But now we got all of her kids in school. Uh, my wife ha- has been stepping in to do a lot more teaching, and she really enjoys uh, watercolors and doing uh, more specialized art instruction for adults. Mm-hmm. And so she's really looking forward to getting into that. For myself, I I have a lot of things on on my shelves that I'm trying to get done things like murals that I've, I've said I get a mural done and mm-hmm. I still haven't gotten it done. And there's a lot of little things like that. Uh, I have another, uh, more projects I've got that I want to work on. And so for us at the studio, uh, I know that my wife wants to do more like instruction like that for older, sure. more, uh, engaging, um, specialty type watercolor classes and uh, Love that, that kind man. of thing. So we're, we're looking forward to expanding that way a little bit more uh, while still doing our homeschool art classes during the day uh, for the little kids. Um, one, of, one of our big things, uh, summers are our big things because uh, a lot of our kids are in school and busy during the week. For mm-hmm. the summer, parents are looking for places to put their kids. Sure. And so for summer camps, uh, that's what we're... Um, right now really busy at work trying to figure out um all the different classes we're doing all the different um workshops uh sounds like a lot of fun man yeah Yeah. sounds like a lot of fun i love it so you know you you and your wife you guys could do anything with your life you've had a rich history you've given back a lot to the people around you why an art studio what 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 made you feel like this really was something you needed to do with with your life. Um, well, I kind of feel like I, I answered that in the way of just saying I needed a space. Mm-hmm. It was more of a practical thing. I needed a space. Uh, but why an art studio? It's it's just something that my wife and I. I mean, for me, I went to school to to get a degree to, to do art. For my wife, she didn't go to school to get a degree to do art, but she has that natural talent that she, that's that's her outlet right now is being able to do watercolor and learn uh, more things that way. And so for an art studio is, is why it's all about a space for us to do the things that we love and to share it with the community, the kids, uh, even the adults who are now later in their life where they have time sitting around to learn something new. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just all about doing what we love, having a space for doing what we love and for people to come and to learn that for themselves. It's wonderful. Wonderful. So um, I know that there have been listeners out there in Bridgeland that is saying, you know what, man, I want to check out this guy's work. Uh, I mean, I'm even thinking we have so many white walls in this office. I'd love to get a mural or one of your works up on the wall or something in here. That'd be so cool. If someone out there wants to learn more about Henzy Art Studio, uh, how do they get in touch with you on your socials or on your website? Yeah, uh, we do most of our social engagement on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook, Hensey's Art Studio. Uh, we also have an Instagram uh, page we got. Uh, we're still finishing a website. Kind of done it backwards. 
Uh, okay. We've got the website after we've done Facebook yeah. and Instagram, but we're still working on that. That's all right. All right. So, guys, you've heard how to get a hold of Henzie's Art Studio. It's been my absolute pleasure to talk to David Henzi and, and to meet his wife, Wednesday Hensey, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you didn't get to meet her, but you had to hear one of the greatest names in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, she had, I'm sure her parents had no idea she was going to marry someone with the same or with a rhyming last name. But nevertheless, we can't predict life, right? Things just seem to happen. And when they do, you hear about it right here on the bridge. On behalf of David Hensey from Hensey's Art Studio, my name is Adam Robison. You've just taken another stroll on the bridge. And it will be my honor and pleasure to meet you right here next time. Have a great day, everybody.